When humans first began to take to the skies at the beginning of the last century, those who flew were adventurers and pioneers of a new realm. But they all had something in common. All were tinkerers, inventors, engineers, and mechanics, people who understood how the machine worked. It was no coincidence that the Wright brothers were bicycle makers, and Glenn Curtis was a motorcycle builder and racer. They had to be hands-on with their flying machine if it were to reach the sky. As aviation progressed, things changed. Aircraft became more complex and more reliable, and pilots did not need to be able to fix the planes they flew. Fewer had the mechanical skills of the pioneers, and within less than a decade, a new breed of specialist arose, the aircraft mechanic. With skill and knowledge, they kept the planes flying, even though they themselves might not leave the ground. Then when war came and tens of thousands of pilots were needed to man the fighters, bombers, and trainers, hundreds of thousands more were needed to keep them flying. And while the world marveled at the exploits of men like Hartman, Bong, McGuire, McCampbell, and Doolittle, few knew the names of those who made the airplanes fly. They worked long nights to make sure enough planes were ready to meet the next day's mission requirement. They worked in steaming jungles, burning deserts, frozen tundras, and on the pitching decks of ships, all to make sure their plane was ready to go. Every pilot who succeeded in combat knew his success did not belong to himself alone, but to the team that kept his airplane armed, fueled, and in good working order. Today, even more than in the past, it is the mechanic that keeps the airplane in the air. Whether it is a simple Cessna or a jumbo jet full of passengers, it takes a vast army of highly trained technical specialists to keep them flying. It is to these unknown men and women, the mechanics on whose so much is riding every time an aircraft takes to the sky, that we pause to recognize their exceptional efforts. This year, Evergreen would like to recognize four members of the maintenance profession who have made aviation safer and more reliable for everyone. Everett Barrick was born in Austin, Minnesota, and like many young men of his generation, joined the Navy in the wake of Pearl Harbor to serve his country. He was sent for training as an aircraft engine mechanic and learned his trade at the school operated by Allison in Oklahoma. After the war, Barrick went to work for Stanley Hiller at Hiller Helicopter, where he became the test laboratory supervisor despite the fact that he had never received his airframe and engine licenses. He remained with Hiller until the company was sold to Fairchild in the mid-1960s. Having heard about Barrick's abilities, Dell Smith visited him at his home in the Bay Area to recruit him for Evergreen Helicopters, and Curley made the trek north to McMinnville. From 1966 to 1979, Barrick worked on all of the company's helicopters and traveled all over the world on a variety of contracts, including firefighting, logging, and agricultural springing. Although he left the company in 1979 to care for his ailing father, he came back on numerous occasions to work on special projects, including the disassembly of the Spruce Goose in 1992, always saying that helicopters were the love of his life. Everett Curly Barrick passed away in 2007. Ed Bridges began his career in aviation maintenance by attending the Northrop Aeronautical Institute in California to earn his airframe and engine licenses. Upon completion of the program, he was hired by Los Angeles Airways, where he worked on Sikorsky's S-51s, S-55s, and S-61L helicopters. Bridges spent 22 years with Los Angeles Airways until the company went out of business and its assets were sold. Remaining to help with the sales, Bridges approached one of the buyers, Dell Smith, to see if he needed a mechanic. He was hired that day, 
and started a long career with Evergreen Helicopters. Working mostly on Sikorsky helicopters, Bridges traveled all over the world, supporting Evergreen's operations in logging, spraying, firefighting, and power line work. From 1975 to 1985, he was director of maintenance before stepping back to assistant director of maintenance. He worked on many challenging jobs, including Evergreen's program to eradicate the black fly in Africa, where he developed the spraying systems for the helicopters and spent another nine months revising the systems when the contract changed. He loved working on helicopters because every job was something different. Ed Bridges retired in 1995, but returned to work part-time for Evergreen from 2000 to 2008. He currently lives in McMinnville. Tuan Nguyen was born near Hanoi, Vietnam, and moved to Saigon when the country was divided in 1954 to work with the U.S. Military Advisory Group. He went to work with Air America in 1965 and became electronics shop supervisor before they sent him to school for his airframe and power plant licenses in Taiwan. When Saigon fell to the communists in 1975, Tuan escaped with his family of 11 by boat on a nine-day voyage to the Philippines. After an additional 10 days of diplomatic limbo on the boat, he and his families were helped to freedom by the former Air America chief pilot. Arriving in the U.S., Tuan worked several short-term mechanic jobs before the Air America colleagues suggested he call Evergreen helicopters. He was hired to work on the Bell 205s and quickly went out to support the aircraft on fires in Alaska, then spraying jobs and firefighting all over the U.S. Going wherever the helicopters were working, he was deployed to Africa on the Black Fly Eradication Program, as well as on jobs in Central America South America and Asia. With over 36 years with Evergreen, Tuan Nguyen continues to work part-time on helicopters and lives in McMinnville. Tom Pitzer began his career as a helicopter mechanic and crew chief in 1968 with the U.S. Army. After a tour in Vietnam, he returned to the U.S. and attended Lane Community College to earn his airframe and power plant licenses before starting with Evergreen Helicopters in 1974. In his first two years, he worked on maintaining the company's helicopters on agricultural jobs from McMinnville before being transferred to the Evergreen Air Center in Marana, Arizona. Pitzer would spend eight years at the Air Center, advancing from mechanic to finish up as the Director of Maintenance, supervising over 300 avionics, sheet metal, fabric, paint, and maintenance personnel at that location. In 1984, he returned to McMinnville as the Director of Technical Services for the Evergreen Helicopter Company and Evergreen Sales and Leasing, before moving to Evergreen International Airlines in 1985. Over the next 23 years, he supervised all aspects of maintenance for the airline's aircraft, rising to the position of Senior Vice President for Maintenance, Material, and Engineering, where he had overall responsibility for the maintenance and support of the fleet, making sure Evergreen's aircraft were safe, reliable, and ready for missions anywhere in the world. Thomas Pitzer passed away in 2008.